Check this out, everybody. This is very custom. There is a lot happening in the back. The engine, the blower, the whole system is happening in the back. So I'm curious to find out what is over here. Loving the horns. Let's have a chat with Chris and his buddy Ron to find out exactly what they started off with and what they have done. Chris, how are you today? Doing well. Can't complain. I woke up. So that's the best news of the day. <laughs> best news of the day. Look what you're riding on. Yeah. So that's a 1964 Dodge crew cab. Came out of South Dakota, excuse me, North Dakota. It was originally an Air Force truck. An Air Force truck? Yeah. What was it used for? Uh, the missiles, bit of been silo basically. Ran the crews around. That's why I was wondering that this is very different. It's very different and I haven't seen anything like this before. Right. So this was used in the Air Force for missiles. Mainly to haul the crew around. Okay. So you got a crew cab, you can call four or six people, whatever, everything was originally benzene. Okay. So they could get people from point A to point B, less vehicles. And how did you get your hands on it? Went to a junkyard. <laughs> That's the best way. <laughs> <laughs> in Wishick, North Dakota. Check this out. This came from a junkyard. You guys have put a lot of work into it. Come over here, Ron. You're part of the build as well, yeah. from my understanding. So tell me, Chris. So the name of the truck, I had two choices. It was either going to be called Miss Silo because it was used to serve the missile bases. So, but I had also Minnesota mean on my idea because we have the most mean mosquitoes in all the world okay. in Minnesota. So there's my truck and there's my, there's my, the uh, right, uh, uh, what's the rat? What's the rat? Red, rat fink. Rat, green, green, rat. rat that's fink. My, that's my rat fink. That's so Chris's I, rat fink. Okay, very yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Who did the graphics here? Uh, just a local guy in our area. Okay. Crazy colors. Crazy colors. Yeah, out of New Richmond, Wisconsin. Now, obviously, when this truck was made initially, the engine would have been here under the Correct. hood. Correct. And what engine would it have come with? A slant six. A slant six. Yeah. I'm already straight loving axle, this. Straight axle, so it's not an independent. It's got, if you look at all the street rods out there, they all got a straight axle. Tire, tire, and there's a big rod that connects them. Yeah. That's what was under here, so it rode like a buggy. All oh, like very rough running or riding things. Big leaf springs under the front, which are normally in the rear also mm -hmm. in a truck. It also had them in the front. It was so it was very built for heavy load carrying. With the Air Force, they weren't used to do long trips, I'm guessing. Just around the missile base. So for them it worked. Exactly. It yeah. worked. Now you've got some horns here which we're yeah. definitely gonna hear once this gets oh, turned on. Oh yeah. <laughs> No, we have to. It's just out of Buick. It's out of a Buick or Oldsmobile again, right out of a junkyard. Now check this out. The paint colors are so brilliantly put together. Yeah, that's just fine being lucky. Some colors you like and put them together. Let's walk around over here. Yeah. So Loving suicide, what you've done here. So suicide doors. So so, so the gotta find the keys. There you go. So basically we've got suicide, so they pop open suicide doors. So the hinges are on the wrong side from what they were originally designed to be. Nice. Take a look at the ceiling. Okay. <laughs> All right, I need to, we need to open the front doors. I so gotta we do the other side. No worries. Up, yeah. I wanna show everybody what I just saw and then we're gonna talk about it. But let me put the camera in here. Yeah. Check this out. So it's got a custom shift because the engine is in the rear. I had to find a way to shift this thing. And that's a electro hydro, uh, it's got a solenoid. So I push a button and it uh, pushes a selector on it. That's the only way I can make it work from uh, the original where you have a lever that normally does it. So that's a 1960, uh, Impala Chevrolet Dash in here. Again, it's a 64 Dodge. So we had to change things around a little bit. Chris, this is very clean. This is very functional and very neat. Loving the wooden here. Now talk to me about the headliner and all the door panels. What is this? Well, it's actually leather rug. Oh, this is so cool. You know. <laughs> 
yeah. I'm always drawn to headliners because they're just so different and right. they can look brilliant. Now this tops it. This absolutely tops it on being very, very different. Yeah. How did you make that? Or did you just... Piece of plywood, put magnets on the back side of it and glued the rug on and stuck it up. That's easy as, as easy as one, two, three, right? Once you just figure, have to have once the you mind. figure it out. <laughs> you just have to have that creativity in right. you yeah. to yeah. do that and you've done it really well. Yeah. So I'm yeah. loving so. it. Let's move over to So again a custom toolbox that we've just fabricated up. It's apparently locked at the moment. But it's got a Cadillac five hundred engine in it that would have come out of a nineteen seventy El Dorado. So it's a front wheel drive system stuck in the rear of the truck. And then that looks like you've got an 871 blower in there? You're close. You've got a minus six, two. 671. Six six okay, I'm exactly. still learning everybody, yes. but we've got the blowers. I'm loving the double exhaust here. Yep. Takes you back to what it was made for. Kind of, yes, yes, yes. The yes. missiles, I mean, I'm getting exactly. that missile yes, exactly. feel for it. Yep. 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 This is just, I mean, the artwork here. Now, did you guys do the yep. paint as well? I uh, designed it, laid some of it out, but I didn't do the painting on it. So these are Cadillac uh, taillights that have been Frenched in, is what they call it. And this is very different. Those are just louvered, so there's a radiator behind here. So, right, this okay. is, so instead of being in the front of the car, it's now in the back of the car. So that's how the uh, air goes through it. Did you say it was a big block? Uh, it's a Cadillac 500, so it would be classified as a big block. It would be classified as a big yeah. block. Yeah, it's actually the largest cubic inch GM ever made. It's the 500. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why this for starters? How, where did the idea of putting well, the engine the whole, in the back? Well, the whole I, well, I saw one similar to this back many, many years ago. And I researched trying to figure out, well, what did he do? Mm -hmm. And it's either something that's called a V-drive that would be usually in the marine industry that does, you go into a boat and they've got an engine and everything comes and then the drive shaft comes forward and it goes back again. And they would utilize that. And I didn't think that that was too applicable for this. So the obvious choice was that well, you just get a front wheel drive system and put it in. So this is not... This is mounted the same way it would have been in the actual Eldorado. So the front bumper per se is up where my toolbox is right now. So it's mounted the same correct way. This is what started it off the build. Yeah. This idea to have it like yeah. here. And yeah. then you had to find a car. A crew cab. A crew cab. Yeah. Yeah. So then those little silver things down there are my rear view mirrors. So I've got a screen up in the dash there that actually shows the movie or shows what's actually happened behind me instead of having any type of a mirror system on the vehicle. So then, let's have a closer look at this. You got to do something that's different that hasn't been done texture. before. Got to have texture and color. A texture and color. Yes. It, it goes. It goes so well with the wood in the console. That was my design. Yeah. It's just, yeah. You got to figure it out. So then, if you look up, that is my rear view mirror. Right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So anytime it goes into reverse, or oh, I mean, at any time. Anytime the engine's on, it runs. So nice. I know exactly what's going on around me. Nice. Yeah. How long did this take you and Ron to build? I had baby teeth back then. <laughs> <laughs> a long time <laughs> it's brilliant now so what are your plans for it drive it drive it yeah well let's turn it on yeah all these cars uh, Chris give, me, give me a minute though to go i got it i got it I, I broke the, i broke my last okay. down, so i've got to go do a special way to get in to start no worries i'll spray it right here there's so many cars here making noise as they're driving past us. We've got to turn this on and wow. hear that big motor. And as well as that, I do want to hear the horns.
guys. Okay. Chris wanted me to show you guys the cameras that is here, that is always on. Safety is a big, big measure that has been taken into consideration, everybody, so we can see everyone on both the sides. But more than that, this is comfortable. No wonder you want to drive it. Yeah. It's yeah. comfortable, it's roomy, you can throw friends in the back. <laughs> Especially good looking gals. Oh, there you go. See, my wife doesn't mind my wife doesn't mind as long as it's just platonic you're talking. <laughs> well, Mrs. Chris, hello to you. I hope you enjoy sitting in this. This is absolutely brilliant. There's so much creativity. It draws people in and, and that's what we want to see. Yourself if you touch it. Now tell me about the horn. So if I was to press this, yeah. who can we scare? Hold on, hold on, someone's coming. Take it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> You've done it well. You've yeah, done it you. really well. Appreciate this so much. Thanks, right. Grace. Yeah, enjoyed it. All right, everybody, there are so many corrals over here, but here I am in the alley of Deuces. That's why there is just so many beautiful, colorful hot rods, street rods. I actually want to learn a little bit more. So I'm here with Vicky and Bob. How's it going, you two? Really Great. good. You enjoying yourselves? Yes. Great time. This is a beautiful row, just the way it's been situated and the colors, the multiple colors that's been happening. What have you got here with you? Got a 1932 okay. Ford two-door. And um, the restoration, how long did that take? You know, the car was built probably 40 years ago, from mm -hmm. what I understand. So, so it hasn't had been touched or upgraded in 40 years? No, it's been, you know, it's been maintained. When I bought it, I had to do, um, put some things in it. Okay. Street, make it street street uh, worthy, I guess. Street worthy, like air conditioning, brakes. We drive it, yeah, so. Bob, tell me, out of all the classic cars that you could have had, you've got yourself a Deuce. Why is that? And what is it about this that makes it a Deuce? Well, it's, you know, it's the quintessential hot rod. Uh, when the boys came home from uh, the war, you know, it, this is what they wanted. So, this is what they wanted. And they were cheap. They, they could take the fenders off of it and go fast, ride, run the salt flats out in California. Okay, and the deuces, are they all these roadsters and coupes from the early 30s? All, all 1932 Fords. All 1932? Yeah. I love that. I did not know that. So that means that where I'm standing, these are all 32s. Yes. This is why I do the car shows and this is why I have the most fun, everybody, because I get to learn and I get to find out more about the history. But 1932, that is classified as a deuce. Yes. Correct. I know that and I'm not going to forget that. Go on. The, the good guys, this is what they call their specialty parking. So they call this the deuce doings or something like that. Um, they've got other areas where like trucks are behind us. Mm -hmm. They got people that drove their car over 300 miles. The long haulers. Pe yes. People that built their own car. You know, so it's, it's a nice deal. And when you sit in this, how do you two feel? Where does it take you back? Obviously not to 1932 because you're very young. <laughs> <laughs> not quite that old. <laughs> yeah. But what do you feel? I mean, it's such a vintage me, car. Even for you guys, it's vintage. To me, it's like I'm 16 again. Okay. Looking through the windshield. The windshield. And has there been any changes to the body here? No, it's pretty much stock. This is a stock, okay. That's why I did stop here because so many times we do see the chop tops there, but this is all original. Maintained and repainted, of course, but everything else is pretty much stock. Well, I appreciate this, you guys. I know it's very hot, so I don't want to keep you here in the sun, but that is beautiful and enjoy your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good time yourself. All right, everybody, one of my favorite places to check out is the next generation here at The Good Guys presented by Goolsby Customs because not only do we get to see all the younger generation who are getting into the classic cars, but sometimes, like now, we get to find a few girls in here as well. Honey, how are you going? Good. <laughs> Introduce yourself and then tell us exactly what have you got here. Um, my name is Nevega Terrace. This is a 70 Monte Carlo that I've been working on. I bought it October 15th of 2022, so I've been working on it for two years since. It's had suspension, frame, new quarters, all the fenders have been redone. The engine has been teared down and rebuilt to 350 with 350 trans. 
There is a lot of work that has yes. gone into this. Now, Navea was only 15 years old when you bought this. Yes, I was. Tell me about that. Did you go out looking for a Monte Carlo? How did you come across it? Well, actually, it started out before this, I had a 66 Galaxy. And okay. I realized when I put money into it, I wasn't going to get much profit. So I ended up selling it off. My dad was searching around Facebook Marketplace because I wanted another project car to get started. And I came across this thing. I found it in Cedar Falls. And now we're here. <laughs> Love it. We're going to look more into some of those details and especially the boards that is done here. I mean, mm -hmm. you're still in school, hun? Yes, I'm going to be a senior. You're going to be a senior. Tell me a bit more about yourself. Now, obviously, you know how to work on cars and you love the classics. How did all that start with you? Um, so my dad and I, when we grew up, we worked on a 53... Ford International, I believe it was. And so he would take me out to the garage and we kind of crank on the engine and just got me interested. And then here these past year and a half now, I've been working at Chris King's Hot Rod Shop. Okay. So he's gotten me into that, which really helped me with this car, if anything. Well, so, the plans after school yeah. look a bit more clearer now. What do you hope to do? Um, honestly, I've been thinking about possibly auto body restoration. Okay. Yeah. Nice. That's what I do now. I love that. I absolutely love that. Now, we know that the engine's been rebuilt. You did a lot of the body work, you were telling me. Yes. I redid these front fenders last year. And every single panel on this car has been redone. All by yourself? Yes. This is pretty cool. We love it when girls get involved. Will you be looking at the interiors as well? Yes, I plan on getting new upholstery. I'm possibly going to be switching to bucket seats bucket seat okay because you want to drive this yes and you're going to be driving it to school yeah and then not only will I be switching to bucket seats I'll be uh, building my own center console out of wood so I can have places for drinks and stuff you know just making it look cool don't you just <laughs> love her I know I do <laughs> Han, where did you what is it about the classic cars that you as a young 15 year old at the time you're 17 now mm -hmm. that you love about them what is it tell us they're loud, they're cool looking, they're fast. What else do you need? And now we just need to tell all now the other 17 year olds. Yes, you can fall on them. Exactly, and you can work on them and mm -hmm. they're so easily able to be worked on and you're learning so much on this as well. Yes, I am. I've definitely learned a lot along the way. It's been a struggle, but eventually it's all worth it. Absolutely. You've. Not, it's not exactly finished, but you've still brought it out here. Mm -hmm. So glad you did, as here as part of the next generation oil here at The Good Guys, everybody. Check out some of the work. And to see more of the build, that 70 Monte Envy. Yes. On, um, I'm TikTok. guessing, TikTok. <laughs> Check it out, everybody, to see more as Nevea continues the build here. Seeing projects like this is what is, inspires me, everybody, to continue working and learning more. Love it. Absolutely love it. Thanks. What's the next plan that you plan to do? Is it the body they're going to paint it or the interiors first? Um, I think the next plan that we have for now is we're kind of fighting the front suspension, so we're going to fix that up and then hopefully we can start painting it. Just got to figure out a color. I'm not quite sure yet. <laughs> I like white. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm swinging either way, white or black or gray. I don't know. Well, hopefully I'll be able to catch you when it's finished. Yeah, I'll definitely be here next year. When do you think? Next year it'll be finished? Hopefully. Should Maybe be. even before then? Maybe, yeah. Plan on it. I'll try to find you about awesome stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful tri-fives and we've got trucks as well. Mercury, patinas and then a lot of character. Custom Frankenford. <laughs> Thank you. Frankenford. I love unique and cool custom rat rods, street rods. Michael's got something here that definitely draws the attention. So here I've got my 1952 F1 Ford pickup truck and its name is Frankenford. <laughs> um, it originally came from a field in Crescent, Iowa as a shell, no motor, no transmission um, and built it up to what it is today. It took another truck from 51 to make four fenders out of eight 
The uh, engine is out of an 84 Mercury. And um, what engine is this? It is a 347 stroker. So I took a 302, put a 351 crank in it uh, with a healthy cam. Uh, everything is brand new, built up. Nothing is stock anymore, obviously. It's got a Mustang II uh, independent front suspension, uh, brand new uh, rear end four link um, 88, and uh, it's on its second transmission, uh, Tremec T5, uh, as well as its third drive shaft, unfortunately. Second transmission, third drive shaft, but what I'm finding absolutely fascinating, and I love it, is hearing Michael tell us about the engine and all the terminology for someone who is Absolutely. learning. I appreciate that. Tell me about yourself, Michael. How old are you? So I'm 24. Um, I started my career building uh, combines instead of vehicles, and then I started to move into vehicles, and now I rebuild transmissions for a career. Okay, where um, do you do that at? Uh, certified Transmission in Omaha, Nebraska. Nice. Yep, so go ahead and check them out. We do lots of business. Um, we're trying to shoot for Best of Omaha, so if you are voting, vote Best of Omaha for Certified Transmission. Check us out online uh, if you need transmission work. Check us out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Not only an awesome builder, but also a great salesperson. They should appreciate that. I hope. Now let's talk about some of the custom work that you've done here outside with the body work. So the front air dam is a 68 Chevy hood that I also found in a field while I was hunting. Okay, it that was, explains this. I can see the hood now. Yep, it, was, it was, so this is the hood. It was in a creek bed. Okay. And so I took the hood and flipped it upside down because you had this original front bump here. So I flipped it so my air would funnel, but I've since hit a few speed bumps and a few lower ends. So that gap used to be a little wider. So, so it's whole, functioning, it's not just for looks. Yep, yep, it funnels the air straight down the center, helps with the cooling. Um, so that was all hand fabricated, that's the hood. This was all sheet steel. Um, the hood is all original. I just did the hand dimple dye for ventilation uh, and for the looks. Nice. Um, but the only thing that is truly original is the grill. It's the only thing I didn't take the paint off of. That's what the paint looked like when I pulled it from the field. So it was a green truck at one stage of It was line. green, red, blue, black, and then <laughs> we finally get down to the white primer. So. Well, I'm glad you kept that, just to remind us as well of the vintage and the character it's got, but then you've made it your own customized it. Bare metal is in. We are love see we love seeing bare metal these days. 1952 Ford. We're going to have a look at the bed and then after that we're going to go and look at the interiors because they look awesome. Why do we have a ladder there, Michael? So the bed, um, everybody always asks kind of what the wood is if I, I went all out. Um, the idea of you, know, if you look at the whole truck, was not to save money but to not go the expensive route. This was just ash that I picked up at Menards for 80 bucks and uh, just did it at home. The gasket I made out of uh, one inch hose because I couldn't find a, a true bed kit that was gonna work for me. So in the rat rod scheme, you go with the rat rod theme. Exactly, and you so, use what you can, you recycle what you've got. Absolutely, and, and I've got a seven up cooler working as my battery box. I've got two batteries worked in parallel. Um, so if I kill a battery or if I for some reason need two batteries together, I can run one or both. And then I've got a full six point cage starting in the back, works its way into the cab and I've got four points interior. Now I've well seen the row cages before and I've seen the full enclosed cages. What did you call this? So this, this would be a full eight point cage if I put the whole cage in, but is, this is just a six point roll cage. Okay. Um, it just helps to keep A in the back. It keeps me from twisting the frame. Right. And on the interior, um, as a younger man, because this was supposed to be my high school daily, my parents wanted to make sure that if I was to roll it or hit something, yes. I was at least going to walk away. And I couldn't live with a rat rod interior, so I had to do a full interior. So it's got a brand new headliner all the way through uh, paint, uh, which is blood copper red paint down to black carpet. It's got a full sound system with uh, six inch in the kickers. It's got two 12 inch subwoofers under the seats, um, two eight inch, three inch shallow mount subwoofers and four tweeters behind the seats. It's got heat, no AC. Um, full interior. You don't need AC. You've lights. got the vent windows here hey, still. That's what I tell everybody. They say does it have AC, and I that, say that it's really works well. Two windows down at 45 miles an yep. hour. And I love so. the fact that that works so well when it comes to the getting the right amount of air in. As long as you're moving, you've got air. Yep. The original vent in the front still works. 
So that's oh, my there you AC go. right there. And you did all of the work yourself? Did you have any help? Everything was done in house. Um, the only things that were done by shop was I had the engine bored and magnafluxed um, in town to clean up the interior of the motor. And then um, when I failed to put in my own clutch, um, I took it to a shop also local, um, Torque in town, uh, T-O-R-Q. Um, and they did phenomenal work. Um, they did my uh, clutch for me, and when I blew my transmission, I called them and said, can you do a transmission for me? And they called me back in five hours and said, come pick up your truck. <laughs> so same thing, if you need work done, they do phenomenal work, uh, also local in Omaha. Love it, absolutely love it. You're here as part of the next generation. Is, tell me a little bit about that. Do you have a class or everyone is just here under 25? Um, so everybody, uh, the first year they did it was 25 and under. Uh, last year and this year they do it 30 and under for okay. the next generation. That's good. So absolutely. That's um, good because yeah, I mean, I'm not that old. You know, the 30 year old should still be included. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, the, I, yeah, I actually thought there would be a lot more competition once they open it up to 30. Yeah. Um, but it seemed like there was actually less. Okay. So, um, but the more the merrier. You love to see the young people getting into it and keeping it alive. Absolutely. Um, so, This is awesome stuff. So much appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank I you. I appreciate yours. All right, everybody. I have found Jimmy who owns this and most likely has built it because we are here in the home built haven section. Jimmy, how's it going? It's doing great. How are you enjoying yourself? I, I'm having a lot of fun. Man, I told you this is the smallest car I have seen. It's probably one of them. Well, for starters, what is it? Is it something custom made or is it an actual? No, it's a, actually a 1971 Honda in 600. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. And this is the size that it was? Yes, that's the, I took the, the body and cut it off of the original chassis and then built an all tubing chassis for it because what's happening there is very hard for that small body. Yes. That would yeah, explain you have to have the a chassis to support the horsepower. Come over here and talk to me about the engine. And Something the engine. so small and the lightness of this is definitely right down there as being very light. But then you've got this machine happening here. What is this, Jimmy? This is a 53 Chevrolet. It makes roughly 475 horse. Uh, it's a big block? No, it's just it's considered the LS family of the Chevrolets. Okay. All right. Let's get to the basics. Where did you find this and how long did you have it before you started to well, go I, crazy? <laughs> I live in Oklahoma and I found it about 60 miles from where I live. And it was just really unique. I still had a title. That's a big thing in Oklahoma. You can't get, you know, you can't put it on the road if it didn't have a title. So. Okay. Uh, and when you saw it, is this, were you looking for something small to do this or it just came to you as? something unique. And this is the first thing that I found that had a clear title and I knew that it would make a really nice build, so. Okay. Well, we've done that with the engine and you didn't stop there. You've upgraded the wheels as well. Yes. Yeah, the whole tubing chassis, it's wheels, brakes, rotors, drive line. It's basically a brand new hand-built car underneath. Drive train, yep. But I love it. Like you said, it's very different. It's very unique. And I like this dashboard. This is something that is going to draw everybody in. Whether you like it, you hate it, you're curious. It's going to get the crowds coming in as we can see. Yes. I love it because it is different. Yes. We love the patina. So you were you able to um, this is, seal it or? No, it, I, I have a friend that does top coating, wants to coat it. But my shop at my house is air conditioned. It's a small shop. So it's not going to rust anymore. So I'm just leaving it like it is. OK. And how long did it take you to do this? A little over two and a half years. Thanks for smiling. <laughs> Are you always into doing? Well, this is the first full chassis built car that I've done. 
uh, I have a friend that I've grown up with since I was, I mean, my whole life. Yeah. He, he always was lucky enough to have money enough from working that he always had the race cars when he was young. He's a few years older than I am, but he uh, kind of got me into it. I told him I was looking for a challenge and something unique, and this is what I come up with. And do you plan to race this? I, I will race it at the end of the summer just to get a, an actual ET on it at the racetrack, but I haven't yet. Okay. Well, it's awesome. Are you going to do something different next time? Or? I'd probably just upgrade to this, either a blower or centrifugal. You're going to put a blower on this as yeah. well? Yes. Does that affect the weight? What happens to the weight of the car? I mean, I'm not too versed when it comes to the mechanical side of things, but putting an engine like that, and then if you add a blower, how do you maintain the weight well, distribution? Well, the, the four link in the rear for the suspension, you can adjust it to make it react different ways. The shocks, you know, if you have, this has QA1 shocks, which is good shocks. Uh, you can get, you know, make it react different ways to different horsepowers at different times on the track. The way it's set up right now, it won't spin. You know, it yeah. just wants to transfer the weight kind of to the rear and and leave. And the tube chassis helps with that yeah, big that, time. That stops the car from twisting real bad. From twisting. Stuff. Because we've seen it and learned about it in some of the blower cars, uh, like when we were at um, Bradley Gray's place, learned about tube chassis. Almost all the street cars did have yeah. those, yeah. the pro street cars. This is cool, man. I Thank appreciate you. your time. Thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> Oh wow, this is pretty nice. Now we are here in the home built haven. Definitely does not look home built. I would love to find the owners. Very clean roadster. I am absolutely amazed, everybody, at some of the home-built cars that we're seeing here. We saw the Roadster and the owners are not there, but check this out. I'm loving the finish on it. Beautiful looking jewel box in there as well, but this is not something that you would expect to be done at home, not at a professional shop. So beautiful vintage air, air conditioning. It looks like it's got the works, but Let's find out more. All right, so I've been able to get Brad up here to tell me a little bit more on exactly what he's done here. We're in the home built heaven section of the good guys. Brad, how are you today? Good, good, I'm just fine, thank you. Love what you've got here. And like I said, the paint job, it's very different, very unique. Right, it's a, more of a sealer before you put the paint on it, but I liked it, that color and that flat or satin. It's originally going to be this indigo blue on the dash, on the firewall. So once this was shot on there, same way here, I left it because it's just different, you know. It is very different, and I love that the indigo blue has been carried over right. to and on the, the mirrors and on the dash as well. Now we've got a 39 Chevy Coupe here. And it's six inches wider than original 39 is. There's a lot of fabrication you've done here. Yeah. So you, did you widen the fenders? Well, no, they're fiberglass fenders and they come extra wide. Okay. So it's the running boards and the rear fenders. Well, I guess what I would like to know, so many people out there working on projects at home, this looks like a brilliant finish. You've ordered the fiberglass fenders, which would have really cut your time in half. Right. right. As opposed to but cutting that. Fiberglass don't fit. You got to make it fit. You got to make it fit. Okay. Tell us more. Because. <laughs> They're, they're mass produce them, so they're, they look like what they're supposed to look like, but they're either with too much gap or not enough, and you got to sand them and widen them or, or make them fit. The hood's fiberglass. I had to add an inch and a half back here to make it fit here. 
And when you call the company, you tell them it, it don't fit. Well, yeah. it's the way it come. You want it or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, Brad? That is the unfortunate reality when it comes to the aftermarket. Right parts and products out there um, they do the best that they can and sometimes we just have to make things fit right and if you think ordering direct fit is going to fit no it's no not no and you have to be prepared for that right. building at home i know i am so i'm starting to understand that but you've done this well you have made things fit right you've done it well now talk to me about the engine what have you got here that is a small block chevy 355 cubic inch with a 6671 wine blower on it there is a blower there isn't it yes it is it's a, well that back in there they call root blowers now okay. they're superchargers but this is old school blower 582 horse 600 foot pounds of torque i love that the blower is able to sit there inside the engine bay it doesn't need to be sitting outside how did you manage to do that the lower you lower it the more it you know, I didn't want it sticking out. So okay. I lower it so you could hardly run over anything because the motor is so low. To That's the what back. I was going to say. It would have to be. And it looks so cool because you don't know it until you open the hood. You know, because when the hood's down, it just looks like a regular car, you know. Until you turn it on as well. Right, and you hear the sound. <laughs> now, when it comes to keeping things cool inside, I notice you've got open here right. to give air, but no other vents on the hood. Well, there's no, but on the inside here, it's hard to see. It's vented in here inside. Oh, there you go. You know, that on the helps sides. Get the air, hot air out. Okay. <coughs> and what did you start off with? What was the condition of the 39? The only thing good on it was the roof. <laughs> Everything from here down was rotted plumb out there was it was gone it was gone and same way in the back it was hit in that back and it was shoved over so that's all brand new what's this is metal and this is fiberglass but this whole back end was shoved so i had to pull it back around the fit so it was easy or was not too hard to find um parts for this classic well, now, the metal pieces, there's companies out there that makes patch panels for this car, and there are a lot of them There's available for a lot of cars. Mm -hmm. They don't fit either. You're going to make them fit. Yes, they don't fit. <laughs> you have to make it fit. This is, there's a company out there called EMS. They make in and out of door skins. Okay. So, you know, you can make them fit, but you trim them, you bend them, you beat on them. It's, it's a lot of work, you know. They when... go in the house and drink a couple beers, come back out. <laughs> But seriously, then you're going to make it fit. But I appreciate the honesty because it is like that. And there's, that's nothing to say bad about the aftermarket companies. They do the best that they can, but something just they don't right. fit. And, and every, back in these days, these cars, two of them weren't the same. Yes. There's no way the doors, you know. Yeah. So you're going to. It's going to be hard to actually get the right fitment. Let's have a quick look inside, Brad. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's have a quick look inside. <laughs> have you got door poppers on it or no what i have is electric windows okay and i have a remote that rolls the windows down then you reach in oh that's open. pretty cool yeah something different we see remotes that open up the hoods the trunks yeah. and even the doors but not the windows there you go so you got the remote then you roll the you know hit the remote reach in and open the door there you go something different it's got hellish stereo in it speakers in the back You've got a Hurst shifter in there, complements the steering wheel, clean dash, and I love the little lights you've got here. What are these? Well, blinkers, left and right blinkers, and the blue lights, high beam. Nice. <laughs> Very comfortable. Now, this is home built. Did you do the interiors as well? No, I, I don't sew, so I had somebody do that, yeah. but the console and the gauge and the dash, I don't know. You do that all yourself. The stereo I put in, but the door panels, I had a guy do that. Well, well done. I did put the carpet in, but. And you put the carpet in yourself. Yeah. This is, it works. It sounds beautiful, I'm guessing. Can we turn it on? Sure. Let's turn it on. Hey, Darlene, watch out, I'm gonna fire it up. Yeah, I'm fired up. <laughs> <laughs> this gave me warnings to the children. Oh man, who took the keys? <laughs> 
<laughs> Alright, th 1939 Chevy Coupe, everybody. We've got 350 Chevy engine, 671 blower. One of the things that I love about the good guys is the layout, everybody. They've got the next generation, then they've got the Corvettes, and then they've got the Tri-Fives. Now here I am at Trick Trucks. So all the trucks that have been done well. Sandra, how are you? I'm fine. So nice to meet you. And of course, I had to stop by at your beautiful Chevy. The color and the wood is what drew me in. Yes, this is oak. It's oak, okay. And what year and truck do you have? It is Scarlet Knight. Scarlet Knight. And this is a 50... This is a 49 Chevy. And we have a 77 four-wheel drive back in. Okay. So we have air conditioning in this also. Though. 49 Chevy. Beautiful color. And what is the engine here? It's a 350. And you've even got a model car. Yeah, <laughs> our painter. We picked up the little truck in Nashville, and the painter painted it the color of the truck. So beautiful 49. And let's come on down over here to have a look at the running board, which I think has just been done so well, and it complements the paint color too. And that's not all, everybody. Take a look at this. And his tailpipe is a Chevy emblem on there. Okay, well, let's have a look here first, Sandra. This is absolutely beautiful. This was done by a friend named Robbie Freeze from Manila. He just likes to paint. Well, he's done an absolutely great job. <laughs> I don't go live at the car shows, everybody, but I do love when we have pleasant disruptions like this. We've got Leonard here, who's Sandra's husband, and LMC is in the back, so they're about to fix something. You had some trouble with the doors, Leonard? Yeah, the latch is acting up a little bit, so we're just getting it checked out quick. And it's convenient that LMC is just right here as well yeah, at the show. Uh -huh. <laughs> that works. We're going to leave you guys to it, and we're going to come over here to the back, Sandra. He's got the Chevy tailpipes. That is pretty neat. And yeah. you guys did that yourselves? We did got that uh, from a car uh, catalog. Oh, okay. So It looks nice. It goes with it. I didn't even know they made those in the aftermarket. Yes. Yes. It's beautiful. And done. these lights look like they're chrome, but they're, you can see that they light up out inside. That's pretty neat. I haven't seen something like that before. Yeah. So yeah. how does the light shine through with... Oh, it's almost see-through. There you go. Yeah. When you get really close, but from a distance, it does look like it's yeah. full chrome covered. Loving the bed. And it's been stained, I'm guessing. How long have you had the 49, Sandra? We've had it about going on eight years. He's worked on it for seven, so... Out of all the trucks that you could have had, why the 49? Just like like the shape of the... My dad had an old Dodge on like a 1950, and I wanted something like that, but he didn't go for Dodge. He wanted the Chevy. <laughs> but you're happy with this as well? Yes. yes. <laughs> it's beautiful. We can actually go over to this side so we can have a look at the interiors. Yeah. And that painting is carried on to the driver's yes, side. It's a little different painting than the other side. He's got the building a different direction or something. Very he's unique. Got the eagle in there. Very unique, very different, very beautiful. And all the creature comforts. I'm loving the wrench for the shifters and the handbrake. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's the neat stuff I love finding on the builds and the trucks here, everybody. 
Yes. But super cool. You enjoying yourself here at the Good Guys? Yes. It, it's fun. We're going to stay till tomorrow and then go home. Nice. America, all American Sunday tomorrow. Yes. Love it. Let's continue along. Thank you. Let's continue on here at the good guys in Des Moines, Iowa. There is a lot happening and of course I'm definitely going to be drawn to some very unique rides which is why I'm standing vintage fire truck and then we've got an awesome Jimmy truck here as well. Let's have a chat with Balin and Waylon. Yeah. And is that on purpose, guys? Tell me about the names. That is on purpose. <laughs> so I followed Waylon for several years and when I bought Jimmy Hoffa from him and we were talking about starting a YouTube channel, I told him, I said, look, I want to be Balin because you're Waylon. I love that. Now let's tell everybody about the channel's uh, name. Waylon Wire. Waylon Wire's Old Iron is my YouTube channel. And, and I owned this old GMC for 15 years. And then uh, Balin, cousin Balin Wire, decided he wanted, he wanted this truck in his collection. And I sold it to him last fall. Thought I'd never see it again. I gave it a hug when it went on the transport truck and said goodbye. And then we became friends since he, since he bought that truck. We just talked on the phone and, and more and more became friends. And he said, hey, you need to come back and drive that truck to the event. And it's been great. It, what an experience. It's really been fun being here. I love that. Waylon, tell us what happens on Waylon Wire. Oh, Waylon Wire built a lot of rat rod stuff and uh, some square bodies and just uh you never know you never know what i never know what he's gonna I, do i had a truck fall off the lift i had one catch on fire i'm serious oh, wow. yeah now is this all on footage like oh uh, yeah yeah and, i know yeah, i'll yeah. be checking out the channel you have to because that's the fun stuff isn't it the yeah. rat rods the yeah. trial and errors <laughs> well think about my channel i i show it all i don't i don't edit anything out and, and there's a there's a lot of mistakes and a lot of bad stuff happens but because but that's real. It all. And it's keeping real, it real so keeping people it real. Yeah. people kind of appreciate that i think but, and and that's the thing that we love about youtube just it's yeah. not professional it's yeah. about what anybody else would be doing and you're sharing your experience yeah and i've been on youtube a long time and, and it's like-minded folks yeah you know, yeah yeah having conversations and visiting with one another and showing each other what they're up to we had yep. some people come out and see us yesterday and it was just humbling because one guy cut his trip short and flew back from maryland so he could be here yesterday to meet us. Nice. Yeah. And that was very humbling. It, it, it was great. It's blown away. Waylon, talk to me. Oh, well, Balin, I should say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the fire truck. Okay, so this is my 1969 GMC fire truck. Uh, it belonged to my local fire department, and uh, it was actually sold to a friend of mine's nephew, and he didn't do much with it, and he came to me one day and said, I want this fire truck to go to somebody that's going to do something with it. So I bought it, and here it is, and this is the second time I've brought it to this show. Uh, okay. The children love it. I let them go inside and blow the horn and get on top and show them how to pump water. And I, I want to see all those things it. because, like I said, I've seen a fire truck from the 20s and uh -huh. we've seen one from the 40s. Now this okay. is a 69. This is 1969. And I want to see what was happening okay. when it came to the fire department and putting out those fires. So let's go and have a look in detail. Now, have you changed anything or is this exactly what it would have been? Uh, pretty much exactly the way it would have been. I really haven't changed anything other than I took the local fire department decals off of it and had these made up. <laughs> and I am bailing wire. And so I had these made up and just put these on right before coming to this show. You know, your neighbors might call you if there actually is an emergency. Uh, you know what? It's been mentioned that they, <laughs> if I have to, they may call me up and say, hey, get here now. Because <laughs> it is still a functioning fire truck. You could hook up to a fire hydrant and you could still pump water with this the way it is right now. Oh, wow. I love yeah. that. Okay. And I drove it um, on um, Thursday, uh, almost 200 miles to get here. And it gets about four miles to a gallon. Of yes, and, and if you look right here is the gas tank, and and yes, it is gas. It does have a gas engine in it. Well, a lot of the fire trucks did, didn't they? Uh, older ones, but yes. in this generation, this a lot of them were diesel. This is a real special engine. Um, this engine, this is a GMC 637 V8 engine. They did not make hardly any of them, and there's almost none of them still on the road. 
And they made it specifically for the fire trucks? For big trucks in general. I yeah. see. Okay. GMC made a 702 V12, and when they discontinued the 702 V12, they went to the 637 V8. That engine I showed you, the rat rod I just showed you the picture, that's yep. the 702 V12. That's the V12, this is the V8. Yeah, well, this one is the one that replaced the V12 when they discontinued it. Okay. Right. And this one very, is the V8. Very, very, the, very it, also, it's a whole generation of engines that GMC did. They call it Super Vs. Very, very, there's not hard, There's not many of them left. Okay, and um, this was obviously came with the truck, so I appreciate you telling me that because I had no idea. Right. Yeah. Now, let's see the, the inside. It's got 41,000 miles on it, and it is basically just the same. I did, before we left, I did put a floor mat in it. So you haven't, did you, I mean, you've put new seats in? No, that's, the seats was in it when, when I got it, but I think okay. they've been reupholstered at some point. They've been reupholstered. Yeah. All right, all the fun stuff is usually in the back when it comes to the fire trucks. In the back? Yes. Okay. Let's go to the back. Okay. <laughs> well, before we move on, what have we got here? Okay, so this would be where you would hook your hydrants up to, and this is all the valves to be able to uh, uh, pump and pull water off of a hydrant. Okay. Yeah. And then and what's this here? That's, that's the water. Yeah, you would turn that, which it's probably really tight, but you would turn that off and that's yep. basically a big pipe. And you would put your big hose to hook up to a fire hydrant right here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of storage. Then, yeah, a lot of storage. I'll kinda of show you what Whoops. Well, and as you see, we take it to car shows and it's kind of our, almost our service truck because yeah. we've got all of our goods on here for all our other trucks. We try to travel in a convoy. Mm -hmm. There was about uh, eight of us that came up here all together. And so, yeah, we used it for that. But at, at one time this had, uh, these brackets here were for the oxygen tanks. Okay. okay. That's what they were there for. Yeah. And then uh, this compartment's basically the same. As you can see back here. And I'm guessing they would have had some tools or some access tools. to break things. Yeah, and they, they actually had more of those uh, brackets for air tanks back there. And I cut them off so we had some more room to store our, our goodies to, you know, go to the shows. Yeah. And then this is just a just another, that compartment goes all the way through. A lot of storage. A lot of storage, and it, it works really well for us because especially we, when you come to the shows, put right. all your lawn chairs in there. We put all our stuff on there. Okay. Here is the YouTube channel again, everybody. Balen Wise Old Iron. For things like this, rat rods, just a lot of fun. So check it my, out. My channel is a lot like Waylon's. I kind of do the basic same stuff. Um, I work on old pickups. Um, I also work on a lot of tractors. I live out in the country. Okay, so it's what's your channel called? Balin Wires Old Iron. Okay. Yeah, just like Waylon's. I'm he's Waylon, I'm Balin. Okay, so there's two channels. Yeah. One's Waylon Wise Old Iron. Uh-huh. And then there's Balin Wise Old Iron. Right. I got it. <laughs> and, and we have become good friends. Nice, good love friends. that. Now I'll I'll untie this here. We have this so everybody can get up here because this is the best part of this. Okay. If you want to get up here, you can just step on that step in there and ride All right. up top. How could I say no? I would never say no to this. One, it gets me really high, and as a short person, I always appreciate getting some height. <laughs> this is this is uh, great because uh, last year when we came to this show, we all put our chairs in here, and I drove this thing down during the cruise time, and everybody hooted and hollered at us, and we just had a good time. How I, did they know? I, mean, I, look I, at let, it. I let kids on here and take them for a ride. Now, let me show you some of the business end of this. Well, where do they sit? Where do the firefighters sit? The, or firefighter, do they sit? the firefighters would have been in the cab. Yep. And also, they would have stand, stood right to that platform where he's standing right now. Yep. And then there's a grab handle right there. That's where they would have stood. Okay. Yeah, up here where we're at right now, this would have been all your fire hose. And look, see, you've got fire hose right here. Okay, yep. yeah. So, if you could imagine all this full of fire hose, They'd hook up to a fire hydrant and then take off and then basically all the fire hose would just feed as we went. I think it's fascinating how much it has progressed and changed oh, yeah. because the earlier ones did have the wooden benches mm -hmm. for the firefighters to sit on, but this is more efficient if they're standing, they're more ready to go. Mm -hmm. This was probably more of the beginning of a more modern, modern day. Yep. Yeah, I Even can see that. It is a 1969 and this is a turret, which if we had water, we could shoot water with it, <laughs> which swivels. Oh, that is so cool. Isn't it? 
very mechanical. I love everything mechanical. I'm a very mechanical guy. So how does this work? Where do you um, where do you put, connect the water? The water? Well, we would hook the water down here. Okay. okay. And then un right underneath of me is the pump for the for the fire truck. And actually, if you look, look right down in here. See how huge that is? That oh, is the pump. Oh wow! Okay. Oh, this is fascinating. So yeah. th this would be already set to go. You just have to turn it and you would be able to get water and sprouting you'd be able out. to get water, yeah. Somebody could stand up here and pivot this around and squirt water wherever they needed. And, and look right behind us. We've got a little guy up here that wants to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is very cool. Okay. And then we can go around and I can show you the real business end of all the pump over there. Absolutely. Yeah. I appreciate the mechanical side of things as well. Oh, I love it. That's why, I mean, there's, there's so much happening. Mm -hmm. what, what is this here? That's just another fire hose. That's the end of it right here. Oh, that's the one connected over there. Yeah, see, it's connected right here. Yep. Okay. You can get back up here if you want when we get down. You, you can get up here. <laughs> here, watch out. <laughs> Yeah. So basically, this is just more storage, and then up here, this is all the uh, real this business. This is what I wanted to say. Okay. This is all the real business end of everything. Okay. And so you know, you've got all your pumping gauges and uh, all of your levers to turn whatever nozzles you want on, um, and then this right here is the control panel to run the truck from right here. This is actually a speed up while the truck's running. You can pull this out yeah. and that throttles up the truck. And there's a tag for the engine right here. And oil pressure. What, what, would, the be the, what would be the need? Um, you know, I, I have no idea. What would be the need to operate the truck from out here? So when you get the truck to where you're going to hook up to the fire hydrant, it's sitting at an idle. Okay. Well, the, the, the guy operating the truck to pump water doesn't have to get in and out of the truck. He, he will engage. If you see right inside there, see that red box with yep. the yellow lever? That's basically a PTO. And that will turn the pump on. So once he turns it on in there, then he can come out here, read all of his gauges and know what kind of pressure he wants. And he can speed up the truck from here and make sure that the truck's got good oil pressure and the truck's not overheating. So and the pressure of the water is determined by, controlled by the engine? Basically, yes, by speeding up the engine or slowing it down. I had no idea. Yeah, and it's and it's re actually really nice because uh, sometimes when I start it, instead of sitting there let, to let it warm up, I'll come out here and I'll pull this out a little bit and I'll just let it sit here and warm up. And and it still is functioning till yeah, this day. Yeah, still functioning. Yeah. And then right here is an air fitting because the truck does have air brakes. Okay. And sometimes if we got a tire while we're out running around somewhere, and somebody's got a low tire, we'll just hook right on here and air up their tire. That's convenient, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Valve, because that's the pressure. And yeah, this is the valve water the pressure and, and, and raise to lower the pressure. This is a panel light right here. At night, I will turn this on and all this will all be lit up. Oh, wow. Yeah. And this will determine how much water is already in the pump. Right. Because right. it's constantly getting it from the ground. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right. And yeah. you want it to always be at full, I guess. You want to try, yeah. And, and it's got a uh, small tank in it, but it's really a pumper. It's made to pump off of a hydrant. Okay. Yeah. And you could actually, so you could hook up to one end of it and pump water and then have another fire truck hook up to the other end of it. And you could actually feed another fire truck that's actually putting out a fire. Okay, I didn't know they could do that. Yeah. Wow, this is fascinating. How long have you had the fire truck for? Uh, I've had it probably a little over a year. Okay. Um, it was, and it's a really unique story. The area where I lived, uh, where I live now, I've lived about uh, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And so this was part of the local fire department. But before that, it came from another fire department that was really close to where I grew up as a teenager. Okay. And as a teenager, I was a volunteer fireman. Nice. And so we would do mutual aid, we would do training. And with some investigation, I found out that I was around this truck back then. And so when it, when my local fire department got it and, and then my neighbor's nephew got it, 
Um, I told him, I always said, I said, if anybody wants to do something with that truck one of these days, I'm interested. Oh, I love and, that. And so they did. They came to me and they said, you know what? We're not doing anything with it. We want you to have it. And because uh, they knew that I would do something with it. And, and I do. I mean, I let, let the kids look at it and we have And, and I can see why you do that and have the kids come up and experience it and make memories of their own because it's what you did. It's yes, what you remember. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and you know what? It's, it, and and I, anything that I can do to help the kids get into uh, how things were done or yeah. the, in, into the mechanical side of things, the more because I love it. I mean, this for this hobby that we do, we got to keep it going. Absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. And I love the truck and the truck, this one as well. So who did both yours? What is the next project? Oh my, I have several. And we hope to see you at the Redneck Rumble. Yeah, got... we, we need to, we should. I have a 46 rat rod that I've been building. Um, I've got a 67 uh, C10 that I'm totally redoing. Okay. And it's going to be my nice vehicle. And it's going to be on the channel as well, so It'll everybody can channel. see it. Yeah. I have a 68 that's on the channel we call James. Uh, we call this one Smokey the Bear. Smokey the Bear, okay. Yeah, and then we call this one Jimmy Hopper. That makes sense, but why James? Where did James come from? So. <laughs> <laughs> That was the name of the man that I got that truck from, and it was the same thing. It was a friend of mine, and he says, you know, you always like this truck, and um, I can't do anything with it, and I want it to go to somebody that will do something with it. And it's here somewhere. We've got it parked somewhere else. I well, love that. Same story behind this. I have so many projects, but I, to, I, I tried to put these vehicles into the right hands, the, the people that, that will do the right thing with them, and I'm so glad that Balin got this truck because he's done some really good good things to it. Things I would have done if I didn't have 40 other projects. Yep. But you were asking about projects. I've got a 1932 Chevy pickup that's a rat rod, and I call it the Rockabilly, and it's got the original engine in it. It still runs great. Nice. I've also got a rat rod that I built. You'll see it on my channel. I call it the Dojalac because it's half a Dodge truck. And the back half is Cadillac, 57 Cadillac with the fins. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's that's called the, the, the Dojalac and, and a lot of projects. But, a lot yeah, of really projects. Into, really into the rat rolls. A lot of fun. Let's, let me, let's get out of here. It's a little bit tight in here, but that's yeah. a lot of fun. Waylon and Balin. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I come to the shows. You never know who you're going to meet and what interesting and very unique rides you're going to find. And we just took a step back into history and I appreciated that. Thank you so much, you guys. Oh, thank you.